Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back to the course on developing soft skills and personality. We are giving it from IIT Kanpur through NPTEL MOOC. I am Ravi Chandran. I have been with you for the past uh, 6 weeks and uh, now we are on the 4th module of uh, the 6th week and this is lecture number 34. So, almost we have only just 2 more weeks and then 2 more uh, lectures and uh, this week particularly I focused on communication skills and the past two lectures I focused on barriers to communication. This one let us look at miscommunication which I mentioned to you in the previous one. Let us look at some illustrative examples and let us see how miscommunication happens even in organizational setup. Before I start let us quickly try to recollect what I discussed in the previous lecture. In the previous one I discussed to you about the barriers to communication, particularly the focus was on interpersonal transactions and then I started with how uh, people can commit mistakes and then cause miscommunication when the frame of reference is limited in terms of language, in terms of slang, in terms of jargon use, in terms of not knowing the official communication parlance that is there. The next aspect I discussed was emotional interference and then emotional interference can happen both uh, in terms of uh, positive as well as negative, it can be love, it can be hate, but both can act as uh, interferences and then uh, uh, even the other emotions like apprehension, anger, uh, distress etc. will act as very strong emotional uh, block. What are the overcoming strategies, especially if you are trying to introduce something new and then people are afraid of accepting it, you need to remove uh, the fear of change. And then if you have to share something, tell something, get something from a person, it is better that you choose the right psychological moment so that you get the intended and desired benefit from the person with whom you are interacting with. Then I discussed with you about the various types of language barriers, same words, different cultural meanings, same letters, different grammatical meanings depending on the position you put and use the word, it is a verb or it could be a noun. What are the overcoming strategies? Making the context clear, using some nonverbal correlatives and seeking clarifications or some of the strategies that we discussed. Towards the end I concluded by uh, highlighting once again the technological barrier that we should be very wary of and the overcoming strategies I pointed out that you should use appropriate medium, you should avoid excessive use of media or the misuse of media. Now having discussed this, I mentioned somewhere in the previous lecture about miscommunication. What is miscommunication? Let us focus on that for this lecture. Communication is action transaction. You act, you express your ideas and there is a transaction involved. Somebody is sending back the feedback and responding to your ideas, your thoughts, your action. And this miscommunication can be viewed as instances of action transaction failure. That is when the speaker fails to produce the intended effect, so then it results in miscommunication. It is also synonymous with misperception when the hearer cannot recognize what the speaker intended to communicate or both. It will become clear to you when I show you some very interesting illustrative examples. But before I go to that, this particular module, I am just going to focus on the organizational setup, the companies, the organizations where formal way of channels are used for communication. Now, in a communication setup that is used in organizations, you can have the downward 
flow of communication that is management is at the top like a pyramid uh, structure. The management the CEO or the manager gives directives and then lays down specific job plans, company policies, policies with regard to the clients, company's goals and then mission statements and then within those goals and mission statements the targets that you are supposed to achieve within a deadline within a framework. So, that is the downward uh, kind of flow of communication. There is also this horizontal level in which people operate where there is less uh, chances for miscommunication because there is task coordination. People can come and then integrate with each other at horizontal level. There is no upward, there is no downward. Information sharing happens very cohesively. Problem solving is done as quick as possible. Conflict resolution comes very easily. This is the best form that is suggested, but there is also upward form which some companies use to some extent effectively also. So, they will start with suggestions for improvement, they will go by feedback from the clients, from the workers, from the low level people and then they uh, uh, take it up further with reports of customer interaction, their feedback. They also look at the progress reports and then they also get employee feedback and then they try to synchronize these ones with their companies goals, objectives and the mission statements and the directives. So, that is how they try to operate. As I said, there are some companies which use downward very effectively, some use upward effectively, but in the current scenario, most of the companies which are uh, very flexible in organizational structure go for the horizontal model, horizontal flow of uh, communication. Now, what forms of communication actually flow through these formal channels? It can be written, it can be oral, it can be electronic form also. In written form, they can send executive memos, memos are short form for memorandums, short notes given to somebody about some simple notice or about even a kind of uh, a reprimanding note that is sent to somebody, letters. Annual report is also a written communication, company newsletter, bulletin board postings, orientation manual. In form of oral communication, telephone face to face, conversation, company meetings and team meetings. So, all are uh, oral interaction. The electronic media form of communication includes email on the top, then voicemail, instant messaging, intranet uh, use of uh, mails communication and then video conferencing is also used. Now, when there is this flow of channels and then there is upward, downward, horizontal movement, obviously there will be barriers especially to the information flow in organizations. I will give some illustrative examples, but why are the barriers happening in companies? So, if you observe most of the times it will happen if the communication climate is closed. If, if it is not open, if people are not allowed to discuss issues freely, if there is no feedback taken from them, if they do not receive proper information, if they have no idea as what they should be doing clearly, how they should be executing their jobs. Administrative hierarchy can also affect this, especially the uh, pyramid method even horizontal vertical flow of uh, communication. Then there are long lines of communication that is so many nodal points are there, so many connective points in between before you reach. So, in a place uh, like uh, uh, some educational institutions, so you have to you are a 
teacher. So, then you have uh, somebody who is a senior teacher to whom you have to complain. The senior teacher or the professor has another higher officer to whom that has to be reported and then there is somebody at a managerial level and then after that person there is this uh, principal or there is this deputy director or somebody then it goes to director then it goes to the CEO or the board of governor. So, at the higher level the people are there, but before it reaches. So, there are so many uh, transfer stations and each point the communication can be distorted and there can be delay in uh, delivering the message. But there is also a barrier when there is lack of trust between management and employees. So, trust is a very important aspect of communication. Once that gets broken down, then it is very difficult to patch up and then rebuild and then maintain the communication flow in a very easy manner. What employees will do when there is no trust? So, they will turn to an informal system that is grape wine. They will believe in rumors. Grape wine means actually once belief in uh, going to a communication that is not formally acceptable, but gossips for example and then people will rely on that more than actual formal communication that is coming from the authority or the authenticated person. Why this happens? Because there is this competition for power, position, sta status, rewards. So, people compete and when they compete they hide information they do not want to share information. Information they think is power. So, why will somebody share one's power with somebody else? But overall it will result in miscommunication causing huge problem for the people who are running the companies. Now, let us look at one message distortion as it is analyzed uh, in terms of downward communication through five levels of management. Now, what happens when the message is first written by board of directors, the message is 100 percent. Okay. The board of directors ensure that it is done in a very clear manner and then they wrote very clearly and the message was accurate and it was clear. But then when it was received by vice president, the next level in the downward communication, he did not understand certain aspects clearly there were some jargons, but he did not want to seek clarification. So, it was only 63 percent, only when the next person received about 37 percent of clarity went off and he did not bother about it. Then he sent it to the general supervisor, by the time the general supervisor received it became 56 percent. Now, again the general supervisor in downward communication, they cannot go high, only in the flattened higher, uh, hierarchy they can always go high. Here they cannot go and seek clarification, they are just like in military army, they are only meant for receiving information and acting on it, they cannot seek clarifications. So, he again goes by 56 percent, by the time it reached the plant manager it became 40 percent and you know what when it received when it reached the team leader it became 30 percent. So, you can look at the levels in which the message is getting distorted and finally, the worker who is supposed to implement this when it reaches him it became just 20 percent. So, from 100 percent from the board of directors when it went to the worker it actually became 20 percent. So, that is the level of distortion that is possible. So, one has to be very careful. Let us look at a funny illustrative example of how miscommunication happens in product evolvement. A client, a customer wanted a particular product and then the idea was communicated uh, to like the highest person there and then one person after another they started executing it. 
So, let us see how they executed it and what is the one that the client actually wanted, we will see that in the process. Now, what was requested by the client? Marketing requested it in this manner. So, they are the people who are involved in marketing. So, they wanted a three tier swing, okay, the, the tier in three levels. So, they wanted a swing. Okay. Sales when they ordered it, they removed the tier part that layer. So, they understood that as three rope connected and as you can see it here. So, they ordered it in this form. Now, from sales when it actually moved to the engineering people, the engineering people designed it this way. Okay. So, they got the message this way that it should be tied to the tree, but the message that it should be like a swing somehow got missed. So, the engineers decided this way and then it went to the production who finally manufactured it. Somehow they got again the idea it is a swing, but then they manufactured it this way on the tree, but you could see it is functionally useless it cannot go back and then come forward. So, it just laid like that. Then when finally maintenance installed it, so they were told that it should become functional. So, what they did? They just cut the tree and then they since the tree is cut this cannot be tied. So, they put some support for the tree. So, that is the job of maintenance and then with some possibility some kind of uh, movement for the swing is possible, but where will the person sit okay. and that is the way communication flow happens and then this is how miscommunication takes place. But finally, what the customer wanted okay, was a very simple tree tire swing, the customer just wanted that tire to be tied okay, and a, with a good rope. So, the customer wanted it to be tied, but the people understood this tire as tier different layers and then from that the confusion started and finally, when the manufacturing set it, so nobody can use it actually. Now, what they wanted was a very simple tree tire swing. You can understand how communication can completely go wrong and how people can totally misinterpret and end in this kind of miscommunication. How can we surmount this kind of barriers in organizations? What is required is modification of communication network, direct access should be given that is instead of people using so many forms of communication talking to so many people in between, using so many phone calls, sending so many email forwards, sometimes the concerned person they should be able to meet directly. Apart from that, the dissemination should be done through several channels. Now, for example, the boss of the company announced it on loudspeaker from a high distance. So, the flight went when he was making the announcement. So, there was some noise disturbance. So, people could not hear it, the date that he mentioned, the time that he mentioned, they could not hear it. So, each one said something about it. So, use other channel. So, write it, display it on the notice board, so people can see it clearly. Send SMS, tell them the date and time. Send email. So, so many channels when you use where it is important, it is not do not confuse that now I am suggesting excessive use. I am just saying where it is likely to be misunderstood, then you use more channels to make the meaning go very clear, so that the persons who receive it, they can use it effectively. Also try to evolve a feedback system involving more than one source. Now, there are institutes 
where people want to complain about the manager or the in educational institutes the head of the department. Now, the protocol says if you want to complain about these people to higher authorities, you have to get it forwarded by these people first. Your own complaint has to be signed by your head of the department against whom you are giving the complaint, otherwise he will not forward it. But giving itself is going to put you in a great dilemmatic situation because he is not going to forward it that easily. So, there should be this feedback system involving more than one source. It is not only this person, the head or the manager who will take all feedback and give it to the higher authorities, but there should be various other sources. There can be boxes kept where they give the feedback. There could be hours specified once in a week at least where the uh, higher authorities meet the concerned people. There could be other ways, they can be allowed to even email or call the people at a particular time. So, make these channels open for feedback, so that will again reduce the organizational barriers. Overall creating open environment for interaction and feedback will almost minimize any kind of miscommunication. Also flattening of organizational structure, that is instead of the pyramid, okay, either way the inverse model that is from uh, top to bottom or bottom to top, whether in the uh, way it rises to a pyramid or it comes down from a pyramid. Instead of that, if you follow flattened model that anybody can get across to anybody, that is the horizontal mode of communication, if that is promoted further. So, that will again uh, uh, create harmony, minimize miscommunication, enhance effective communication. Also, if you are there at the hem of affairs, try to provide sufficient information through formal channels. So, in some companies email is the formal channel, in some other sending notice is the formal channel. So, all this formal channel when you send the information give sufficient information, do not reduce information so that it causes confusion. Just I want to conclude this with the uh, light hearted note on uh, miscommunication. It is a joke and I found it uh, interesting from the net, I thought I should share it with you. Uh, this is the kind of uh, miscommunication happens sometimes because of misperception. You use filters in your mind and you selectively choose what you want to hear. So, that is illustrated in a jovial manner. So, what wife say? So, the wife says go to the store, lay down the mulch. So, that is like uh, putting it on the ground wash and wax the cord, get the kids at school, rent some videos and finish the rest of the dishes. Now, she has given so many jobs for the entire day and what husbands hear as the way it is represented uh, by the cartoon, the husband here, he hears only the key words that he wants to hear and he has put a filter in his mind and then he misperceives what is said to his favor. So, he hears only these words, go, lay down and get some rest. Okay. Simply he takes it as go and sleep, okay. whereas the wife has given work for the entire day. Now, this is a funny way of telling how misperception leads to miscommunication. Hopefully, with the, this example and the other illustrative examples that I gave, you are able to grasp what I mean by miscommunication. So, keep your action interaction process complete and then use appropriate language, use to remove the other emotional interferences, use to avoid this kind of filters 
the perceptional filters you keep in your mind, do not take only what is favorable. Even if somebody is trying to criticize you, try to listen to the criticism with complete utmost intent of listening it actively, so that it will help you positively. If you remember all these ones, so you will be able to develop grow as an effective communicator and as it was pointed out in the previous one, developing your communication skill is not a big issue. It is just like any other skill, it is just a matter of practice, it is your patience, perseverance that will help you to practice it and avoid uh, miscommunication to the maximum extent possible. I hope these uh, tips and suggestions will definitely help you to uh, grow further in terms of developing your personality and becoming a very effective communicator. Let me conclude this with uh, wishing you once again to become a very effective communicator in all your chosen areas. Thank you for watching this video. I will get back to you with more aspects related to communication, particularly the nonverbal communication. Thank you. Have a nice day.